Vad roligt att se er alla. Jag heter Karin Engman. Jag är från Tele2. Jag har en titel som kallas Head of Digital Trust. Det innehåller jättemycket säkerhet med privacy och allmänt hur folk ska kunna lita på att de är trygga med våra tjänster. Och jag är... Sorry, this is in English. <laughs> And I am really passionate <laughs> about protecting people online, and that's the most important part, I would say, of my role. And with me today, I have Linda. Hi, thank you, Karin. I'm Linda Wikström. I work as a cooperation manager at ECPET Sweden, which is a child rights organization that works really close together with Tele2 in uh, collaboration to protect, but also to reach our vision at um, ECPET, that we want to see a world uh, without sexual abuse of children. Thank you all for being here today. So, <coughs> start with this. I'm the comedic relief in this. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a lunch exercise, you know, <laughs> like Karen is sitting and I'm standing and when then we go going to change. Uh, how many of you know about ECPET Sweden or ECPET? Anybody heard of you? Thank you. There was a lot of hands. I'll give you this short history to just have some uh, that uh, some of you don't know. ECPET. ECPET is a child rights organization. And we, um, ECPET is, um, uh, was founded in 1990 in Thailand, Thailand and in Sweden it was 1996. And today 120 countries has an ECPET organization, but every organization of ECPET is their own. So. At ECPA Sweden, we are our own organization. We work really close, of course, in an international and national perspective. We work, of, for example, to, to be prevention and also in uh, regarding trafficking, traveling, tourism, advocacy work. But we also have operational work at our office here in Stockholm. We have a support line for children that we call Dit ECPAT, your ECPAT where children and youngsters can call us for support, for help, regarding issues that are to sexual abuse or harm. Or and we also run a parenting or adult line where adults and professionals can call for also to, to be more in advice. And we run the national hotline. And a hotline I will go more in detail because it is on the hotline view also that we are cooperating together with Tilly 2 in some of those issues. And of course we work really, really strong with like spread all the knowledge that we get. And the most of the knowledge that we get, we got from children. We are a child rights organization and the focus of the children is very, very strong of everything we do. Doesn't matter if we are in a cooperation together with Tilly 2 or the schools or whoever. The child is the first perspective for us. And often when, when people are meeting us, they said, how big is this crime? How big is the scale of the crime of uh, sexual exploitation of children? And now we start, and, and just to focus on the scale that we see on the net, on the internet. And I also want to, to say something first, that internet is a fantastic way technology, chat, whatever, is so fantastic for children. They can um, get in contact with each other, they found knowledge, everything. But it is also very, very important for us to talk about what threats can be on the internet. And as an adult, or an organization, or a company, or a professional, it's our duty to help our children. And we need to talk about it. And just to try to answer uh, how big the scale are uh, regarding sexual exploitation on, on the internet. 1992, I think, there was the first picture that was uh, um, published on the internet. And if we see, like 1995, the police in Manchester have took in 12 analogues, pictures and movies regarding sexual exploitation of children or sexual abuse, sorry. 1999, this number is raised to 44,000. And if we look at 
2021, there was 85 million pictures and movies mo that were um, um, reports to the American organization NECMEC. And then I would say those 85 million uh, pictures and movies, there's all, all only from one organization, mm. from one company. So that would mean this is the tip of the iceberg. And these numbers is huge, and we can't like realize what it is. But the most important thing to talk about is behind every picture, every movie, it is a child. That is so important to know this because also to take how can we take a responsibility, all of us, how can we build tech development, how can we, in our knowledge from from listen to children with our knowledge together with Tilly2, for example, and other kind of companies that you represent. How can we help those children? Of course, we, we don't want to have those pictures. We don't want them to be produced and also to be published. So there is a prevention discussion that we also need to take. To have pictures in movies that are spread on the internet is very, very hard for a children, a child, sorry. It's in physical health, we know that the numbers of suicide is stronger, and we know that for every day, that child knows that these, these pictures are spread, the abuse are still there. So you can just imagine, a child that is six years old has been harassed or abused, in some way exploited, that has been documentary and spread. This abuse will go on and on and on and on and on until the pictures can take down. And that's what we are doing, and I'm sorry for this a bit pluttering <laughs> picture. No, it wasn't, sorry. Is it okay? You see? Also you see in, in, um, uh, at the web also. And that's why we are working with this ECPET hotline and, and run the national hotline. Every country has a hotline. There is a, a, a web page uh, where people can anonymously come in to us with tips, what they thought that is sex uh, material that are included in sexual exploitation or abuse of children. And I also want to say that ECPA Sweden, of course, there is not, uh, it's not legal to, <laughs> to care about the, the, the pictures and movies, of course, uh, of porn, uh, child pornography pictures, but we have like an ad in the law, of the Swedish law, so I just want to say that. We have tips from the public, we have tips from other hotlines, uh, if, for example, the server is uh, here in Sweden, other hotlines sending us the pictures, so we can take it to Swedish uh, police or we can send it down to the server provider that has the picture. And also from our support line that I was mentioned, your ECPAT, children can call us and um, send the image uh, in a really, really good tool that we just won a prize for yesterday uh, in the best way of, of uh, using uh, tech. So we are very proud of that. So children can send in these pictures to us and we can put them in hotline and in our web crawler to, t to try to take them down. So there's three different ways, and we work really, really close together with the police, of course. So every tips that are coming in, we send it to the police. Uh, for example, maybe it's an investigation or something like that. Or otherwise it's not, we contact the servers on Swe in Sweden to take the pictures down. And this is very, very important for the children to take those pictures. So I really also want to I really, we want to have more knowledge regarding hotline. That is, often we say that something has been spread on the internet is going to be there forever. But that's not the truth. We can really help uh, children and youngsters uh, to have these pictures down. And we also send the pictures that we got in into Interpol, the national poli uh, international police uh, organization. And that's because they can identify victims. So, and they, I think we ha they have, they um, identify seven children in average each day. So our work also are helping out to take out children that are 
may be under abuse. Um, <coughs> hotline is just related to the tips that we got in. So we just, we are not sitting just in wait, but we really take, someone have to come with the tips. Is it the children or is it um, the public or another hotline? So that's why we also need to work in more prevention way. And since 2018, we have worked with a Canadian project that called Project Arachnid. And Project Arachnid has uh, a lot of <laughs> different kind of, of spider arms, but one of them are the crawler, and that's the part that we work with. Project Arachnid is a, a web crawler that searched the internet the whole time for pictures that has already been uh, sampled, like to have sexual exploitation um, abuse materials. So if someone tries to, to reload it again or publish it on the internet, the web crawler is going to take it down immediately. In 2021, uh, at our, uh, with our three analysts, I would say, and that time, 2021, we looked at 900,000 pictures and movies and make it marked uh, for, so they also can take it down from the internet. So it's very, very that we work with great technical development tools together with our knowledge that we have as a human person together with the technology is very, very important for us in our work. And it's also important to say that we are not just sitting and watching those pictures and click them and take them down. We also take knowledge that we see on trends and so on, so we can go out and have reports uh, to make in an advocacy work together with politicians or that we can also be together with the company or startups and so on, to find out things that we can make a better uh, day for, for the children at, at the internet. So this is the most important part that we need to do, because we are 23 people in ICPAT Sweden. We are an organization that have a vision that we want to see a world without sexual exploitation of children, but that I can't manage it by myself. Our organization can't manage it by yourself but we can do it all together. That's why it's so important for us to collaborate. And every company, every, I would say, stakeholder can take the, the small step together, how they can also make to start talk about these questions. I was starting three years ago at ECPET, and people were just saying that, I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear what you are working with. This is the most, Words I can imagine that have that our children are abused or harassed in sexual way on the internet or of course in the physical world. And this is also <laughs> this is not the right way to combat this fight because we need to take a stand by our children. And that we can do together. And as I say, as ECPAT organization, or ECPAT Sweden, we like internet, we love technical solutions, but we need to really focus on what we can do, do it better. With our knowledge, we can also spread. And that's why we have the tech coalition, that it was a telecom coalition, that Tele2 was one of the ones uh, that was founded in 2018. And from last year, we are a tech coalition that we can go together, share our expertise, how we can work together with, uh, for example, uh, safety by design, or how can we reach out for maybe the customers at, at Tele2, or how can we help Tele2 for, for their advice on their sustainability goals, etc. And <coughs> I would say this, I think we have two different kind of uh, tech coalitions in, in the world, there's Sweden, and I'm so proud to say that we also have a finance coalition that we work with the bank and the finance industry together with the police. And together, companies that are really combat in some way of customers, etc. But we sit together in the same table to find solutions. I am so really to see a, a more brighter future if we can do things like this together. And I really hope and, uh, that you can all 
every one of you just share a little or spread the knowledge regarding it so we can be all together to work with a vision for sexual not sexual exploitation of children. Thank you so much. And I leave the floor and I take the sofa from Karen. Mm -hmm. <coughs> be careful when you sit down. <laughs> be careful. <laughs> okay, great. Can I sit down. <laughs> well, that's, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> it was a bit soft. So. Right. So, as I mentioned, I'm passionate about making sure that everyone is safe using our services. And we want, of course, people to use our services as well in Teletu. And children is really an especially vulnerable group. They spend an ever-increasing part of their life online, and they should do that. They have amazing access to a wealth of knowledge and entertainment, but also some disturbing content. And we are a leading internet provider. We feel that this is an area where we actually can make a difference. We can make it better. So our child protection efforts are really about creating a safer environment for everyone, every child and, and youth online. So this is part of our sustainability strategy. We have four focus areas in the sustainability strategy relating to our core business. Uh, the first one is advanced circular economy. So this is committed to reduce the climate impact of our operations. And here we have high ambitious target to reduce our emissions. We also want to boost innovation for sustainability to make sure that we create both business and sustainability value for our customers and uh, ourselves, of course, as well, using innovative technology like uh, 5G and IoT. We also want to maximize the potential of an inclusive and diverse workplace. So we really want to make sure that everyone can uh, feel safe in our work environment and uh, be the best. And of course, we want to protect children online. So as I mentioned, it's an especially vulnerable user group that need uh, extra attention. And life online should only be a positive experience for children. But today it's also the risks to health and bullying, disinformation and, and unfortunately sexual assault as well. So we work with both preventive and reactive measures to, to protect the children, including blocking the child sexual abuse material, CSAM, I'm going to use CSAM. And this year we are adding to our technical implementation, we are adding this project Arachnid to our protection capabilities. Now we'll talk more about that. So we block hundreds of thousands of attempts every month to, to access this material. We use lists, that's the way we do it, from the police, from Interpol and now lately from pro Project Arachnid to identify what to block. And the number of blocked sites vary from month to month because the people that produce this material and the people that publish it, they move around because when they are detected, their sites get taken down. So uh, when the sites go down, they are not in the list anymore and then of course our blocks decrease and that's not a good thing. Still, of course, every site blocked, every access blocked uh, is one less child being exploited uh, in that specific uh, instance. But we need to have this updated list from the police. We have been talking to the police a lot about getting more frequent updates on those lists. And Project Arachnid has really come through with uh, updated lists. We saw a great increase. I'll get back to that. But we have done this for over 20 years, actually, blocking CSAM material online. And we also had a partnership with uh, ECPAT for many years. And this is a really important part of our work. A little bit of history. So as I mentioned, we started about 20 years ago. So we consider ourselves being in the forefront of this area. Back then, it was all about the freedom of internet. I think some of you were around in the 90s here. I remember those discussions. 
and uh, around um, and then we had the pirate party at and pirate bay they were lobbying for the freedom of internet the full freedom of internet uh, and that was not only in sweden but globally and around 2011 we decided as a company that we want to block CSAM in all the 13 countries we have operations in and some of those countries actually said no on a political level so we actually had a conversation with our colleagues in those countries and decided to block anyway thank you and I'm very pleased with what that led to, because it led to a discussion on the EU level and later it led to regulation, to a directive to block CSAM. So that had a real impact. And then between 2011-2019 we blocked the URL, but also DNS uh, level with a tool named Whitebox. But around 2018, uh, internet was so heavily encrypted, so there's no use blocking on URL level anymore. So now we only do it on DNS level. And um, then in 2018, we formed the Telecom Coalition together with ECPAT, which is now the Tech Coalition that you mentioned. So that was also a big step forward. So what happens if someone tried to access this material? This is what they will see. This is a block site. So we block CSAM because we want to protect our customers from inadvertently ending up in a site that has this material. But we also want to prevent those that are actively searching for this material to, to get to it. And uh, as I mentioned, it's uh, based on list provided by the Swedish police, the Interpol and Project Arachnid. And the list uh, contained domain names uh, with confirmed sexual abuse material. So police, Interpol and Project Arachnid have identified that this is CSAM and stamped it. So we don't have analysts doing that work in Tele2. And then the list are sent to us in a very secure manner. And then we implement these into our technology that's connected to our internet services in all our countries, and that's Sweden and Baltics. So if an internet user tried to reach this domain, uh, they would be right, redirected to a stop page. In Sweden, it's by the Swedish police. In Baltics, it's by Interpol. So this stop page says that your browser has been trying to access confirmed uh, child sexual abuse material. This may be considered a, a criminal offence, and then also how to report if you find this kind of material online, but also where uh, anyone who is attracted to this kind of material can turn to get help handling this attraction, so they don't act on it. Very important. So Tele2, we can't act as a law enforcement agency. We don't want to and we can't do it. It's very important that it's handled by the right authorities when it comes to the spread of CSAM. But we can do whatever we can in our power to combat it in our services. So that's what we're doing. Blocking CSAM is something that we believe in and take very seriously. So as I mentioned, we uh, collaborate with ECPAT since many years back and we also provide the telephony services for the anonymous hotline and also for the support line that, that uh, children and teenagers can call to get help. And we set that up quite quickly when you wanted it. Yes, there was, uh, I think it was two weeks. Uh, there was just in, in the beginning of the pandemic. And we saw the hotline um, in our forum that says that, that some people wanted to have more material. That really saw that, oh wow, children are alone, they are home. And we saw that it really was asking for, and we really believe really quick that, okay, this is, children is going to be very, very in a harmful position. And we need to start up our support line earlier than they, we have a, um, have thoughts. So mm. uh, together with with Tool2, they help us because we don't have any technology knowledge regarding uh, to start up a support line. 
we can be the, the person that are there to support the children. Mm -hmm. But in that way, we need a technical uh, part from, from Tele2. And I think it was only one and a half or two weeks that everything were up and running. That was so, so uh, valuable for us. And I think this today is like 3,000 each month that are contacting us to, uh, at phone and, and chat. Mm -hmm. But that was a very important step just in the beginning of the pandemic. So yeah, good step forward. And uh, of course, so I mentioned that uh, the international contacts, the, the, the lists that we get, they are really important. This 30% is the impact of adding Project Arachnid only to our mobile traffic. Now we're also going to for fixed. So this is a huge increase. It's really good blocking more. That's all that we want to do. So um, as soon as it's implemented in the fixed traffic, I'm hoping on even higher numbers than 30%. So our ambition, our vision is really to drive the industry forward in this domain, to make sure that everyone do everything they can. And we do this together with the very crucial partnership we have with ECPAT and continue to build on that one. So our short term goals is of course to evaluate how to improve the blocking even more and uh, then continue to inform our customers about this work and what they can do as well, uh, how we can protect children, and also find further opportunities to support B2B customers, for example, in preventing distribution in their channels. So uh, all ideas and opportunities are, of course, uh, good ones. So this is not only important for Tele2, this is important for the whole society, and it's really on top of our agenda as part of the sustainability strategy. So um, we have more initiatives started. We also have very nice re reports on this domain. And this QR tag takes you to the site where we have uh, uh, the information about what we do to protect children online. So please go there and read more about it. And also Rosanna and myself, Linda will be in the Tel2 booth after this if you want to talk more with us. Rosanna is uh, our sustainability analyst here as well. So thank you very much for listening today to this topic. Mm.